welcome back to my channel. So today I have a fragrance video for you. Um, I have acquired some new fragrances in my collection, which I wanted to share with you. Some I have purchased and some have been sent to me and I actually have another one on the way that I purchased, but it is coming from abroad, so it's gonna take a while to get here. And I was thinking of doing another video about fragrance, like my fall and winter fragrance lineup, like which perfumes I plan to wear more in the fall time. Um, so let me know if you'd be interested in that. So my first acquisition was a perfume that I ordered online. So this was a blind buy, and it is by the brand Swiss Arabian. You can see it here, this is like a chrome, gold packaging so it does get fingerprints on it so let me just polish that off for you <laughs> so yeah this is Shagaf Oud by Swiss Arabian um, Swiss Arabian to those of you guys that don't know it's a brand out of the Emirates so it's from United Arab Emirates they have stores in the Emirates I think they have a big store in Dubai as far as I know um, but it is an Arabian perfume house and I've been wanting to try from a brand that's not so westernized. Shagaf Oud, it's a oriental woodsy oud fragrance and to oud to those of you guys who don't know is a very unique scent that comes from the agar wood that has a certain type of mold in it so basically it's a very precious scent like ingredient although i do believe that most oud nowadays especially at this price point because this is not a super expensive perfume um at this point's point are now um chemically created so they are synthetic ouds because oud is yeah super super expensive like the real oud oil so i think most oud perfumes now are made synthetically that doesn't always mean it's bad like i mean I, a lot of perfumes have synthetic notes in them sometimes that's actually better for the environment as well because you're not having to you're not having to um, cut down these trees to make the ingredients so the top notes in here are saffron and oud the middle notes are rose praline and oud and the base notes are oud and vanilla so oud seems to be a dominant note in here although i do have to say to those of you who are familiar with oud and who don't like that scent the oud in here is not super dominant even though it does seem from the note pyramid that it is a very dominant note because a lot of oud scents are can they can be very animalic they have a very very intense strong scent which a lot of people might not enjoy but i feel like the oud in here is very soft very like forgiving it's uh yeah quite a calming oud in here if you're wanting to try your first type of foray into oud perfumes this might be a good one to try because it's not it's not super strong um, animalic scent yeah it's a nice combination of those slightly sweeter notes like the rose and the praline gives it the so the praline def definitely gives it a little bit of a gourmand vibe um, this is actually what I am wearing today let me just get a little bit more on here it is very sweet it I can definitely smell a lot of saffron in here, which definitely the saffron gives it a very Arabian type of vibe. Um, I feel like saffron is not a note that is used super frequently in Western perfumery. The oud combined with the saffron, yeah, it just gives it a very Oriental vibe. It's a sweet, um, delicious, sort of rosy oud scent but to those of you guys who don't want just a straight up rose oud this is a nice one to try i've just read so many reviews about this a lot of people say that this is a good dupe to the lancome oud bouquet i don't actually have that fragrance so i can't compare it i think the notes in it are actually the same so i don't know if they're trying to like copy that perfume the performance on this is pretty good um, some people say that this is like a beast that it you, you put it on and it has like major sillage like you can really smell this across the room I don't find that to be true it does have like a good a lasting power and a good sillage but I definitely have perfumes that um, perform stronger than this I think it's a nice perfume I got this for a really good deal this was on sale for around um, 30 Swiss francs on the Notino website and I think for that price it's an amazingly performing perfume so the next perfume that I wanted to talk about is this one this was sent to me me by Yves Saint Laurent and this is black opium um, this was a special limited edition uh, ed like release because of the packaging is slightly different than the normal uh, packaging for this and this is a nice um, designer fragrance release that I feel is very mass appealing it's nice it's sweet it's definitely vanilla in here that's like the first really 
strong note I smell is vanilla. Notes of coffee, and then the other accords are pink pepper, orange blossom, jasmine, vanilla, patchouli, and cedar. I think the main notes that I smell in here is actually the floral and the vanilla. So the jasmine note is obvious to me. The vanilla note is very obvious to me. I do smell a little bit of coffee as well. So the coffee note is nice as well. So it kind of gives this very sweet, vanillic, again, sort of gourmand note going with the coffee and vanilla. Those are very sort of edible scents. I feel like this is a really nice sweet scent that is not cloyingly sweet. I'm actually, I think this, the cedar gives it a nice balance. The lasting power on this, I would say is average. It is not the most longest lasting perfume I own, five hours or something on me before it starts to kind of dissipate. Um, the smell will last longer if you spray it on your clothes. Um, I also like to spray it in my hair. I feel like this is a scent that I think men would enjoy on a woman as well. <laughs> so if you're someone who likes to get compliments, for your fragrance and then likes to appeal to the opposite sex. I feel like this is a, a good one. I mean, I kind of wear just fragrance for myself, so I'm not, I don't really care what other people think, but um, this is, I think, a very compliment-getting, like crowd-pleasing scent. I think you could wear this during the daytime as well because it's so non-offensive. Like, you could definitely wear this, I think, to like to work or to the office and not have people complaining about it, but it is more of like a nighttime scent. Okay, so the next scent I wanted to talk about is this one by Lalique, and this is Lalique Soleil Eau de Parfum, and Soleil means sun in French, and I think the bottle of this is beautiful. I actually think the bottle is kind of re reminiscent of a sun. You can kind of think like these are like sun rays kind of going out. It has a beautiful gold cap. Um, this is the 100 milliliter bottle. It's beautiful. I think the bottle alone is absolutely stunning. I think it'll work really well in my perfume collection. It's like a very happy, sunny, juicy. This is almost like a summery type of perfume. So the top notes in here are mandarin, cardamom, and bitter almond. The heart notes are coffee, pera, granita, jasmine, and then the base notes are musks, sandalwood, and pink praline. Wake up and the smell the sun, the dazzling light of fruit and spices, a zesty start to a beautiful morning, the addictive treat of a gourmand heart. It's supposed to be very uplifting, like daytime, like happy, sunny, um, summery days. It very much reminds me of that. It is very sweet. It is a very gourmand-like, very, very sweet scent. This was sent to me, so thank you so much to Lalique for sending this. I don't know if I would personally have like purchased this because it is very sweet. I just have a little bit sometimes problems with like very sweet scents. They can be a little bit cloying on my skin. But if you like very happy scents, like this is just very happy, very sunshiny. Um, it does have a fruit, like that fruit note to it. It says mandarin and pear. You know, the top notes will come out more when you actually spray it than just smelling it from the, the, the the mist is really good on this sprayer as well. This is a really good sprayer. I can definitely smell the, oh yeah. The mandarin comes out definitely as the top note. It does have that like top sweet um, mandarin citrusy scent. Actually, yeah, I can really smell that now. But the that citrusy fresh note doesn't last. Like it is a top note. So top notes are meant to be the opening of a perfume and it kind of dissipates. And then you get more of the, the caramelly vibe in here. The cafe latte and the praline and the bitter almond kind of gives it almost like a caramel sugary type of smell. This would be something more I would wear in the summer, less so in the fall and winter, just because it is so like sweet and gourmandy and like that mandarin note opening kind of just reminds me more of sun summertime and it is called Soleil. So it kind of just gives more of like a beachy, fun, happy vibe. I wanted to also do a little update on a scent that I originally had talked about in my perfume collection, and I, I hadn't really been a big fan of it, and I've kind of changed my mind on it. So that's actually by Erin, and it's Hibiscus Palm. It's not like halfway, but I've worn it quite a bit since then. I actually do like this fragrance a lot now. This is one that I wore more in the summertime. The hibiscus note in it gives it that very tropical, vibe like it's a floral it's a tropical floral yeah it's hibiscus and uh coconut are sort of the main notes that i pick up on in here ginger palm leaf elong elong oh yeah that's it the hibiscus and the elong elong and the lotus 
and white flowers and frangipani. So all the florals in here are very tropical. The base is musk, vanilla, and coconut. The frangipani, the lotus, the hibiscus, obviously, and the white flowers. They're all very like tropical, hot climate um, flowers. And so they, this, I love this in the summer and I actually wore it quite a bit. And I actually revived it recently because I wore this recently to uh, like a summer event I went to. I went to this like food festival and I had this on. And I actually had layered it with this one by Versace. This is Versace Versance. This is a very citrusy fragrance. Um, I talked, to, I did a whole video review. I love this perfume. And I had combined these two because sometimes what I'll do is if I, if I have a perfume that I like, but it's like a little bit too sweet on me, I will add in a citrus perfume and to just kind of lift up the heaviness factor. It kind of just cuts through the sweetness. So I like to layer citruses with other fragrances. I sprayed um, the Erin. And then I had layered it with this one. These two together are so good. Um, although the perfume just by itself is lovely as well. Like this side, I'm just gonna do, there we go. Sprayer is nice on here as well. And this one just has that zing of citrus added in. And when I had these two layered on the hibiscus palm with the Versace Versance, I got a really nice compliment from someone, like a total random stranger saying that I smell good. I like it. It's the sweetness of the, the at the hibiscus palm, it's like tropical, the, the white florals and the coconut, and then just that shot of citrus in from the Versace Versance, which is, I think, mandarin, lime, and lemon, and there are some florals, and there's actually a cedar base to that as well. I think now in the fall, I'll kind of retire that combination for a bit, but it just kind of goes to show that, you know, your ideas about perfume can change, and it can, you know, sometimes you'll find like a new combination or you'll layer something on top of each other and it just totally revives your love for it. I'm actually keen to try more from this brand. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Give this video a thumbs up and I will see you soon. Bye.